Well, we get to roll for winners today, too. See who's going to win the January uh, giveaway. Right. Please let it be me. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> I would not mind dice, but I definitely don't have a use for the book so much. I'd probably give them to a friend. Do, 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 do. And I'd give my son the mini because <laughs> he paints and does miniature cars and, and things like that, clocks and whatever, calendars right. and stuff. He gets these little kits for Christmas and his birthday from his grandparents and his dad's got a couple car models that he got him and he made. Very cool, very cool. Oh my gosh, I think he's finally, finally going out. Yay! CP baby, CP baby. Finally. <sighs> Yay, CP baby. <laughs> the last game. Let me put that on here. No. The for last. some reason, you're not showing up on Twitch for me to see. Yeah, I'm. It's delayed. I, I've been. We've been live for a minute forty. Ah, there we go. It just popped up. Did it? The announcement's not coming through though. Normally, stream out. Ah, there we go. It just popped up. Uh, we can hear ourselves now. I, yeah, I, but the normally there's an announcement that goes out. Yeah, I didn't get that. I, that hasn't come up yet. There's been... I've been having a lot of issues lately in the last couple days. And we're at 426 followers. Well, you know what? It's the last game. Let's... Oh, let's there it is. Get this through. Came up for me. Yep, just popped up for me. All right. Let's get our deaths on. No, oh, let's not Window die. wants to update. Should I restart now? No. <laughs> I will snooze. It loves I know. to update I'm right like, when no. I start playing. <laughs> I like how everybody kept their initiative. Well, almost everybody. You're gonna make oh, a I, like roll. To I had the shittiest initiative, I so I thought I'd I keep it. Mine. <laughs> Do you remember what my initiative was? I should have wrote that down, darn it. I think it was like 20. <laughs> or 22 or something. Uh, like that. We'll, we'll wait yeah, and see how it goes. I think I, cur I think I had crit my initiative, didn't I? Um, I believe mine was ever, 21 was or like 22. No, you were pretty low. I think you were just before Apollo. Was I? I don't remember. Yeah. I know I was last. I don't remember what number I was. Darn it. I know I was first. Yeah, it was you, me, then, then Arena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it was Kai. Then, a, no. Yeah, then it was Kai, Apollo, and then Golsha. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. He's getting a little so baby I was doll like chin. Number four. He is. Yeah, Twitch is, Twitch is doing some weird stuff. I had to refresh the screen in order to see, like, the actual view count change. Well, the other thing that's weird, too, is my overlay won't work anymore for the D&D Beyond extension. Just stopped working. It won't, even though my account says it's linked, even though I uninstalled, reinstalled, re-signed in, un, like, I did everything to the reset point, and it still won't. It, it says no campaigns available in my Twitch account not, or in my D&D Beyond. I go, are you kidding me? There's 12 campaigns in there. You're out of your mind. And I can't, I can no longer get it to work. I tried for an hour and it won't work. Oh my God. Dark One Scion just updated his announcement. 
What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everything of age and size? I, Dark One Cyan, have arrived. <laughs> that's such a Balev move. No, that's an Omni. Actually, move for I was sure. thinking. I was. I was thinking it's more like Tobias. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. With all of his titles, Aki, how yeah. are you? Hey, Aki. Freaking hey, man, legend. Needs titles. Legend. Wait for it. Dairy. Dairy. Legend Dairy. <laughs> Legend Dairy. No, now, now I want to watch <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> oh my god. And of course, the one player that cannot get a connection is Apollo. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> You could just call yourself he who should not be named. That's that's kind of like the Dark Lord. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get this party started so we have enough time to draw winners. Because tonight, oh, new glasses, ladies new glasses and gentlemen, two years. You have a nose. Well, two year campaign wrapping up tonight. <laughs> OMG, OMG. Did I state OMG enough times? OMG. Well, we might. Be. Hey, Xofer. Glad to have you coming to hang out with us. He's one of our newer Discord members and one of our pay to play table subscribers. One of my peeps. Oh, wait, wait. I see a face. I see a microphone. I see glasses with blue reflection. Up, 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 and away. I see. I see. I see. Let him in. There he is. There he is. He made it. And he's got a very loud background. He must be. Is it very loud? Nope. Uh, it, it's better. Is it's it a loud? Bit of delay. It's a bit of a delay in your microphone, but we'll have to mute you from from the background echo it sounds like you're in a hall uh, let me get to my this head this headset uh, it's not it's on the computer gotcha go for it can you, you hear me now time. Better? yeah much better. better thank you thank you thank oh. you thank you look at us guys we're figuring out stuff we're figuring just out in time. Time. just in time just for the last time. game <laughs> <laughs> the final episode yeah <laughs> final two years in the making uh, i think all we I have to we show could... for it is is weight gain diabetes nervous hoping... energy what are you talking about you have a baby resting dick face i'm like wait a minute i've I've lost like a lot of weight. <laughs> I'm not diabetic. Although you swear, you looking at Golshaw and Derek, they are clearly father and son. Can you tell we're in the army? Can you tell we've been in the army? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, you both, you both look completely bitter. The only person that we haven't seen this whole game hey, I'm is excited. All right, Lady Maybe. Kai has been a dog this whole time. It's true. This is true. No, I think we, there was one that she <laughs> one for the last I am more than I in person anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, no, XO for sorry. Oh, well. said that it's our first time catching the stream better late than ever. Yeah. Congrats. You made it. Yeah. Made it <laughs> yeah. Episode. Great. You, 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 you made us. Campaign. You made it for all our deaths. Congratulations. So, spoiler alert. Um, Good job. We're gonna Good. see how if you want to go back and watch all of the uh, Feyrune Reborn. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert. Happened. Don't watch. <laughs> How many no, no, watch watching? them. See me die a couple times. Right Don't worry about it. A couple. Yeah, See him nice. not die a couple times. Watch them. Well, Don't watch tonight. You're already down. I mean, half of our party is down right now. So yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I, I am down. I, 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 
I'm pretty sure I, I, that is in my notes that it was called I had to take last session because I did not have a computer or anything anything to set up with. Functioning? What? What? You yeah, pretty much. Forbid, you try to forbid a you have a computer you... that works for an online game. What? You... what uh, well, I do way? have a computer for an online game. I just don't have a charger. All right? <laughs> ah. Organizational skills, Apollo. If you're going to die, die well organized, my friend. Slap well the organized. mule on the grindstone outside that makes the computer <laughs> no. work. The, Let's get the into the wheel this. of torture. We well, so before, we, before we yeah. recap, Let's get some shit away. I want so much time in gameplay. I'm just like, I let's know, just skip right? it all. Skip it all. Do skip it, it Skip it. Let's go. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> so, Everybody wins. Yeah, I got to roll. So, so, Valev, you get to roll this time. Oh, snap. Hold on. Hold so, on. you want Crap. to click with the dice. <laughs> go to the monthly dice giveaway first. Yeah, I have to I have to copy, uh, copy paste the, <laughs> the roll at D1000, right? Yeah. Exclamation R. Space. One it D never 1, works. 000. It never works. I always have to nah. copy it from Vince's <laughs> message that he sent to me on like April thirtieth. Better hurry up, right. up Tess. It, <laughs> it won't work. Because you're not typing it right. Exclamation R space one D one thousand. Did I roll in this one already? Let me see. I did. I did on the very first. Okay, like at the beginning of the month. Cool. There yeah, I guess. Go. All right, Tusk, go. you got a 44. Everybody's everybody's in, right? Here we yep, go. We got it, do. right? Dice giveaway first. Come on, Valev. You got a 44. <laughs> Come on, 900. baby. 900. That's not 44. <laughs> 900. That, that's, that sounds like my roll. Yeah. Uh, eight, yeah. 817, flying axe, six, uh, 13, rolled an 817. Um, what is so it? Far, I, I got an 876, so. Oh, oh snap. I, I, I think see so somebody far. below me got an 830. Kai got 972. That's the wrong direction, though. That is the wrong direction. 876 is closer. 921, Strawheart 3. That's closer because it's closer than 25. Yep, nine. Uh, oh my God, Strawheart's gonna win again. That's great. That is. I didn't great. think Strawheart won last week or last month. That was a while ago. Oh. Okay. It was when we used to do the weeklies before. I just didn't have enough time to manage it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think Strawheart. Strawheart. Strawheart's the closest. <laughs> nice. That is cool. She is probably sound asleep because I know she's a head of the so at Strawheart. Yeah, she's asleep. Congrats. Come on. This isn't that. like Jeopardy. If they're over, they lose. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, buddy. You're thinking Price is right. <laughs> yeah. Got to get close All right. Enough. Let's do that. Min Let's do that gargantuan dragon giveaway. Yes. All right. Miniature. Tuss, did you already put yours in for this? No, Hurry we up. put. Hurry up. Put. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> oh, he's opting out. Okay, here we go. Oh, Rolling. What do you put? Mm. 470. Not even close. Uh, 563. 470. Uh, Enigma on the dot. No, oh, Enigma. Yeah, yeah on right. The dot. Enigma. Oh, go Enigma. That. <laughs> when did they roll that? He be our winner. He's going to be so happy. That was today they at 9.59 a.m. I know. I know. That's insane. <laughs> 10.15. Insane. Amazing. I'm just double checking to see if there's another 470. I don't see one yet. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's a dupe. Derpy oh, Raven snap. and Enigma oh. both won because I've always said ties are winners. So so cut the dragon yeah. in half. I know, right? And <laughs> Enigma and Derpy <laughs> Raven. Congrats. Enigma's probably and watching. The dragon. <laughs> Yeah, Derpy Raven. Wow. Yep. Crazy. Oh, Strawheart's awake. That's great. Yeah, so thanks. All right, let's do the book. All right. Make sure I rolled. Did I roll for this one? Yes, I did. All right, what are you looking at? I'm looking. I'm trying to get a 349. That's what I rolled, like, <laughs> back on the 2nd of January. All right. Come on. Woo! Give me 300, 309, 309, 309. Come on. Pick me, pick me, pick me, Rolling. pick me. Stop. I didn't roll. Eight fifty-two. Whoa, eight fifty-one. 51. <laughs> X over with an eight fifty-one. Wow, eight fifty-one. Snap. 
He's off that's only by one. It. That's yeah. probably going to be the closest, but let's look, check. Going up, going up, going up. On a going Tuesday. Up, going up. She chose down. Yep. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> why? Why do you got to sully the name? Why do you got to sully the name? Looks yep, like Xofer like is our winner. That is awesome. Yay. Woo! Congrats. And yeah, we will be nice. resetting these yes. channels with new giveaways tomorrow for the month of February. Now, month of February is a shorter month, only 28 days. So if I check the calendar. Birthday month coming at, up. Um, we are looking at choosing our winner next month on a Monday. So I will probably do a creation special to announce the start of the new in-studio campaign, which will include Callista, yep. Ivar, Patrick, Haley, and unfortunately, I don't know if Chesray is going to be able to join <laughs> us because it would be a live in-studio game. Monday nights from 6.30 until 10.00. Is what we're shooting for and he's living in his bus down by the river yep, yep. i have yet to go to a river mind you. <laughs> <laughs> i did have two come trips. on I did you can hang out with all the other arizona. van people down by the river you can Dude, it's like a whole community let me tell you what the the drive out to arizona there are like four <laughs> or five spots along the 10 that are just like massive bus life van life trailer community oh yeah Crazy. oh yeah that whole stretch between um uh, quartzite, you know, that mm -hmm. whole stretch of quartzite up and down the Colorado River, all that whole area. Um, if you ever watch uh, Brian, this, Brian Laundry Drive, yeah, 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 I know that drive. Oh, uh, yeah. too soon, uh, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> uh, but yes, yes, tonight is the night where we finish up Favor and Reborn. And then we start planning our new in-studio campaign. It'll take place live in the studio, Monday nights, 6.30 to 10 o'clock. I'm adding that extra half hour so we can take kind of like official breaks because, well, one of our players has a brand new vape boy. And I know that he will occasionally need her attention. I want to make sure we have uh, a and break the DM. time in there. Uh, I'm more, I'm the more like, swaddle him and and walk him at like Changes you know, 11 o'clock at night so that Callista can get some sleep before the you know early morning feed um because <laughs> literally last time he wouldn't settle and i and i walked him while he was fussing and uh, he was out in like 20 minutes and between his snoring and Callista's snoring it was it was a real sawmill in there man a real sawmill he thought he was getting he walked by santa snore. claus he does not snore. That's why he went to sleep so quick. I the guy's gonna wake up with a present. Calista's like, it was all me. There's two different tones. It was all me. Like, I, 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 each nostril like harmonizes with. <laughs> oh, there's no harmony. All me. It's sheer terror. Yeah. Sheer terror. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, here we are at the end of a long journey. I what heard you started there was off... no time limit tonight, right? It was just not gorgeous. really. I mean, we'll try and get done what we can get done. Um, it all started 250 years ago when <laughs> the world of Terrell the and the continent it. known as Faerun was subject to a last ditch effort in order to save what was left of the world. The Pestilent One was sundered, the Rift Wars concluded, but the Weave was destroyed the entire world thrown into chaos as all the great city-states fell to ruin and wreck. And a small kingdom, the kingdom known as Bith, in the very center of the Midlands, was the only barely surviving location within the Faerun. This had given a beacon of hope to those that attempted to travel and make their way out there fighting off famine ruin plague marauding bandits warlords and bosses of all manner who sought to destroy any of those traversing out towards this little community called whist 
here, they barely hung on for year after year, decade after decade, until recently. Vert and Tamlin hatched a plan to master the ability to go back in time. They never quite mastered it. With each iteration of Lord Silverhand that they brought back, it cast, well, a challenge. The individual sentient apparitions of Silverhand never could quite cling on to the reality that they were pulled into. However, a final attempt was made and with Arena's assistance as a life cleric at the time, managed to stabilize the form of Silverhand. Arena being a member of the Chimera Company, the Chimera Mercantile, as well as using her local influence to obtain political power, economic power, the kind of pseudo de facto leader, a halfling who in order to save her friend Apollo, made a deal with Ball and became a death cleric. Gol Shah, paladin, Templar of the Raven Queen, after finding a vestige underneath the volcanic remains up in the Worn Tooth Mountain Range, had begun a journey, a journey to reestablish her faith, increase her followers, and bring her strength back into the world. With the help of Uther, the one who ran the Sunrise Chapel, the beginnings of the Templar are finally at hand, as the Raven Queen is finally making her reemergence. Velev, from the tribe of the Bear, and a Bearkin himself, a young lad who has aged quite dramatically running around with this group, as they seem to get in all sorts of shenanigans. But, pretty tough kid. He stood by all them side by side and now wields a staff of such tremendous power. It probably has put the balance of the world in check. Derek with his wolf that we only just recently after two years learned that's actually Dudley. We thought it was Dudley. His ranger skills, his affinity with the natural environments and his <laughs> uncanny dexterity. I mean, this motherfucker moves when he moves. And this bow that he uses to back up his friends. Kai Silverhand, the adopted daughter of Lady and Lord Silverhand, a master artificer, tinkerer, tactician of new weaponry and things that have been recently found. Apollo, a master of the raging barbarians of the Deep West bringing forth the opportunity of the Weave Crystal, only to lose it at the last second to one of the avatars. Then, once again, retrieve it, and now lies mortally wounded at the base of the Academy of Knowing. Here is the space upon which the world will decide its fate, not only in the long view of the future, but the here and now, as the mighty avatar of Merkel has been shattered into three lesser beings, while at the same time, it would appear that Lady Silverhand, who took the Weave Shard back up to the Astral Lathe and said just a few words to Golshaw, give me time. All I ask is that you give me time. And a time was given, she's activated the Weave Crystal, the Astral Lathe has come back into existence as the blinding light begins to burn out of the Academy. There is only silence, a sense that the combat still rages around, Kai unconscious up on the tower, Apollo nearly burning and crushed to death by the creatures that are approaching the front of the Academy of Knowing, Velev expending every ounce of the staff's ability to summon creature after creature after creature, Derek nearly falling to a mighty blow from the form of the Avatar. But Arena standing her ground with Ghost up on the down on the battlegrounds, mixing it up. Golshaw on his flying carpet, 
after sundering the avatar after everyone pulling together and finally getting this creature to shatter and the lathe comes into existence you watch as templars the armed forces of brachus the ships unseen before not even knowing what they are is these huge flying ships these dirigibles coming in with these great pirate standards waving from the main mast as johan seems oh. to have returned as well riding rivers of arcane energy and flame the wizards of Thay now under the tutelage and control of maximilian who was once a relic himself and became re-infused with his form and allowing the red wizards to once again walk the material plane and be a part of this great struggle all of this culminating with these creatures of doom and dread, death, bone, and all manner of creatures that have sighted the form that is Merkel, its shattered avatar, now wage this last campaign of hellscape. But burgeoning out from the academy, a great radiant of light. And this light expands evermore, wrapping all of you in a sense of warmth. There's pause, the noise fades for all of you. Just this persistent, blinding light circling, enveloping you. This warmth plays out all over your form. Kai. Wherever you are, yes. <laughs> it is not where you were. It is oh, no. unfathomably hot. Great arcs of caverns of fire, valleys filled with sulfuring lakes way off in the distance. You can see a great spire, a great obsidian tower of death and hate. As you recognize there's a boil in your blood. You are home. This is where oh, you wow. are from. As you stare up and out the great kingdom that is Despaters, all manner of creatures flying around, beasts unlike anything you've ever seen before. And then this great booming echo of a chord just echoes into this space and then poof, you watch as this form stands in front of you this great horned tiefling approaches you he stands very tall similar in circumstance of condition similar in feature and look he stands before you his eyes burrow deep into yours. Well, it's good to have you back, daughter. It's been a long time. But me and my, well, me and your mother knew that sending you out was the best choice. Have you decided well, to come yeah. home? Yeah. I'm not really done helping my friends, though. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me, sir. We're in the middle of a battle. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> um, you are on my threshold. The eleventh hour. <laughs> you are on my threshold, child. Something has brought you home. Why do you choose not to stay? Because I'm staying with my friends. I want to help uh, them. You know, uh, they're all in trouble right now. If you return, you will die. Your soul will lose its connection with this place. And you may be lost forever. Are you sure? 
Um, man, I would really love to be able to stay and visit with you and learn more about myself, but I can't leave them. I can't abandon my friends. He might be your daddy, but he's not your father. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is there. I, I that, promised them I would help them. And and the people that you sent me to be with, I guess, um, I don't remember you. I grew up with them. And so they're my parents. And I care about what happens to our town. But a moment in time. Let me show you your future. And as he brings his hand down in front of you, this vortex opens up behind him. And everything's in ruin. You can see all of your family and friends dead on the battlefield. Great beasts and creatures malformed now stroll upon the surface of the material plane with complete fortitude and assurance of their claim of the material plane. You could see off in the distance, the Worn Tooth mountain range has collapsed in on itself, almost into the form of a throne. All the rocks taken on, the piles of the millions of dead souls that are now consumed by it. And the great avatar Merkel sits upon this massive throne, casting his chaos ever deeper into the universe. Kai, give me an insight check. Okay. Um, let's see. That's a 16 plus. Do, 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 do. Uh, that's an 18. 18. There's a glitch. The vision fades for just a moment and almost blinks. The visage that describes itself as your tiefling father glitches into the shape of the blackened avatar of Merkel, rousing your conscious form, knowing the lie and deceit for what it is. Your eyes open. You're actually inside the academy at the feet of Lady Silverhand. I was right. Her hands yep. <laughs> are in front of her. She has manipulated the crystal over the lathe. And she looks down at you. Ah, thank the gods. You're the first. Now, let's get the rest. Oh, Mother, thank you. I knew that was a trick, Mother. I was never going to leave you. Gulshaw. As you climb the great cliff face in deep ice and rock and snow, you've been here before. It's strange. It's the path you took to gain your oath and to earn the right to spread the word of the Raven Queen. You pull your near frozen form up and over the edge of this cliff face. And there you're staring the ruined form of the old temple. Wreck and ruin. There's the marks, the signets, everything. You've been here before, except sitting on a large boulder nearby is this person you've never seen before. He's quite large of stature. He wears great gleaming plate mail armor. And he watches you as you approach. You know it's a lie, brother. No matter how many times we throw our lives away to save this place, it's never really going to be saved. Once you're gone, it's gone. Sure, maybe they're friends for a bit, but they'll go back to war and killing each other. And this figure stands up and kind of walks into the ruin of the temple. And he looks back at you. If you could do it again, would you do it differently? You're muted. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Why the fervor, brother? Why the blind faith in a world that's only ever known struggle and hate and fear? What makes you think this future is worth saving? You thought at one time. And as no. long as some of us go on thinking that, at least if they're killing each other, they will be killing each other. There won't be some hideous monstrosity like the bone god killing well, them. Therein lies the lie, brother. Templar, oath keeper of the brothers. This form kind of walks up alongside you. You have faith. I have truth. Somewhere in between the two lies the reality of what this world will suffer. The question is, if you could carry on forever and manage and save countless other worlds, would you go to her now? If her feathered embrace were to drop in front of you, knowing this world will burn, but you will save dozens of others because your faith will be the light to other worlds that have never experienced the idea of her visage, her energy, her love, her warmth, her cold neutrality. I'm sure those other worlds have their heroes and this one has me. So I choose to stay in this world. You watch as the visage kind of shimmers slightly and there a single white mask, the tear below the eye, great raven queens, waving wings behind the mask, just hovering in front of you. And then just for a moment, this flare of light, and then you hear her voice. My gift to this world is you. But you will come home to me when it's done. There is no stopping that, Gulsha, for we do have other worlds in which your faith is needed. Even in sacrifice, you hold on to what you believe to be true. This is the mark of my champion, and this is the mark I bestow upon you. And there's a blast of light around you. And the next thing you know, you're standing, weapon in arm, looking around. Kai is half on the ground, looking up at her mother. She then looks at you. And there you see Lady Silverhand twisting the crystal, spinning the lathe, forming intense magic around this thing, trying to maintain. She looks to see you and goes, Gulsha, um, two out of six. Let's keep this going. And can I help mother? <laughs> As you stand on the tower, looking down at your great works in front of you, a world reshaped in the mind of a bearkin. The many thousand tribes swarm across the surface. The planet is peaceful. Enemies have been subjugated. The evil of the world has been cast out and this world spins on as a beacon of light. Standing alongside you, your founder, your shaman chief, your guide. Well, Belef, you certainly have done wonders. Perhaps it's time to rest. Perhaps it's time to take this message to the rest of the lands. No need to fight. We're not done though. There's, there's not time to rest. We, we haven't, we haven't Look finished. We you. haven't stopped them. The world is set aright. You have done it, Valev. Set down your staff. Join me. No, we, we we haven't found Scorch and Max. We're we're in, we're still in the middle of the fight. This isn't right. Something's not right. Give me an insight check. Uh, 
plus 16 plus where's my stats there it is uh insight check oh plus eight <laughs> uh 24 24 there's a glitch holy crap the form shakes and shivers and as the false illusion fades away and this vision is revealed for what it is it is a hellscape a destroyed place of permanent chaos and suffering. In front of you, the second shattered form of the avatar wails into your subconscious. Give me an intelligence save, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. <laughs> the, absolute, the absolute worst thing I could possibly... Oh, no! That's right. I remember when I, when I uh, drew it first because they have... Uh, they have help. I think that. you multi-classed into like 20 different things, didn't you? Just two. Just two. <laughs> uh, plus five. Uh, 19. 19. There is blinding light all around you. It envelops you and warms you as this chilling sense of doom and dread crashes into you then reverberates out of you at the same time. And as you gain your vision, standing in front of you is Golshaw, weapon in hand, Kai over by her mother, and then her mother looking back at you. Ha, ah, that's three. That is three, we could do this. Is this real? Is this? <laughs> All too real, dear. Yes, it All is too real. real. Golshaw, Gol <laughs> you tell me. Tell, is what is we're, there, we're in a fight, right? By the way, Valev, you have one hit point left. What the fuck? Okay. As you guys look, as Hold on, you're, muted, Gulsha. And, you're still muted, Golsha. Um, um, when you said one hit point, I was in Barricade form. Is that one Barricade hit point or one Valev hit point? You're back in your Valev form, and, and you I'm have down one, to one hit point. One hit point. Okay, got you. Uh, that as Golsha, Kai, and Valev sit there, either helping, aiding, encouraging. Once again, Lady Silverhand focuses on the crystal shard and begins to weave it back into the astral lathe for a fourth time. And on this fourth time, Derek, everything around you is peaceful. You're sitting in a glade, unaware of how you got here. There's a very familiar dryad that kind of floats over to where you are. She's in the pond. This is reminiscent of when you first met her. And the air and water and the everything's perfect. And she's in the water looking up at you as you sit on the rocks, bow in hand, your toes dipping in the cool water. She looks up at you. Was it worth it? Was was what worth it? Well, you know you're not going to live. There's no way you can make it. You can't beat a god. It doesn't make any sense, dear. So, I'll ask you. Was it worth it? And she kind of swims out into the pond and back to you. Well, it was definitely worth meeting you. Had I not met you and your friends, my grove would have perished along with me. But here, she swims. And then it's for the first time you realize it, it's inverted. You're somewhere else entirely. And it's inverted in the sense that the color of the sky doesn't make sense. Greens are blue. Reds are yellow bird-like creatures that you've never seen before. This is something new you've never seen before. I use primal awareness. You're in the Feywild. And you recognize it for what it is. She's built you a sanctuary for a moment. And she has but one option for you when she looks back up at you. Stay here with me. can live forever here with me. 
You will never know time. You will never know the feeling of loss. It will be me and you guiding those that deserve to be here. Just stay with me, please. Loss? I already know loss. It's an old friend of mine. And I draw my bow and shoot it. As you draw and shoot, there's a flare of light. And you're inside the academy. Your bow expended, the arrow gone. Standing nearby is Golshaw, Valev, and Kai. It feels like you're in the interior of the academy, but there's something wrong. There's a twist, a rotation of energy. Space is shifting. And then as you settle, Lady Silverhand looks. Four, one, two, three, four, two to go. I can do this. I know I can do this. And once again, she plunges the crystal into the astral lathe. As the four of you watch time itself distort. And suddenly there's dozens of images of yourself in different conditions. Some dying, some living, some suffering. And then... <laughs> Arena. The swirling battle is no longer around you. It's nowhere to be seen. Ghost is at your side, and all you hear is the machinations of Ghost. Oh, fuck, we're dead. I think we died. I think this is what death looks like. Do you hurt? No. Are you, I mean, is there any pain? You, so, no. Maybe? It's got to be death, right? And then you hear this booming no. echo from just this empty space around you and Ghost. <laughs> ah, I like bargains. I bargained mm. well with you, Master Cleric, Keeper of the Dead. I definitely bargained well with you. Well. Are you here to stay? No. Well, why not? I don't think I'm done. You don't have to be done. You've kept your word. And the bargain has been met. And I curse you with a child. <laughs> <laughs> and a baby. A very fussy baby. He will baby. not Savage. Stay asleep ah. today. He will not stay asleep today. He's a savage, man. He's like, no, I crush you with a barbarian. baby. I crush you with a fussy baby. <laughs> <laughs> One that's just mildly inconvenient all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to suffer. <laughs> yeah. They don't talk. So maniacal. <laughs> yeah, mine's 14. He's the same <laughs> It's okay, Sebastian. Except he can and actually cook for himself now. So After... <laughs> The echoing laughter kind of subsides. You've kept your bargain. I've kept mine. If you choose to stay, it will be under your own accord. I will not hold you to this, but be aware. If you stay as one of my loyal acolytes, and you maintain your understanding of what it means to live in a world where death is just as likely as life. I will grant you a God's favor when you need it. It will be the only time I can intervene. I will not be able to intervene again. But it is the mark of final devotion. You will be a priestess of Baal. You'll be the first of a new kind of cleric that will roam Faerun and gift that world the understanding of death. It is your choice. 
But I'd go back to Feyre. Um, yes, you could stay. Just... And... Okay, I have a crying baby. Um, that was that was. I get back. I go back to Faerun, but if I you just remain a devoted Ball, cleric of Ball, devoted cleric of Ball, and he can intervene for you one time only. Once. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, Ooh, he is. He's even getting hoarse. Poor kid. I know. I don't know why he's not settling. Um, or Sebastian. Is like, hmm. He's hungry. Uh, <laughs> he's wet. Something. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, Arena makes deals. We've seen. Yeah. <laughs> it would make sense. She's just like, like it's a game show let's right make now. Make a pro and con list with this one. It is like, can you make this baby uh, stop crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good intervention. <laughs> uh oh, he's getting screwed. Yeah. Yep. The only way he's going to shut up. Nah, I'm so. shut him up. <laughs> What say you, Arena? Bring my world to a world that needs the balance of death. Without it is only chaos. But I miss the twins. Perhaps preserving a world from chaos to give the others opportunity to come back of their own accord. Perhaps the misgivings and the undecided understanding of death and life is the only thing that will bring hope to this world. Without it, just chaos. Well, I want to bring hope. <laughs> and I wanted to bring life. I look over at Ghost. Ghost misses, misses eating. And not really. I don't poop oh, anymore, no. so I'm okay with that. Never mind, he doesn't miss eating. <laughs> Just like Kim Jong-un. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I look badass. People don't fuck with us now. They don't, they don't fuck with us. But, you know, I mean, they're also kind of scared of us. That'd be a little scared. And patronized. Was I patronized? You, you choose. I have no problem with your choice. We've been together a long time. Me and you be partners. Always gonna be partners. Yeah. Ah, it's a hard choice. Damn. Booming echo of energy begins to swirl ever tighter, closer around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, I hate to order the easy. <laughs> see, what Merkel, <laughs> see what a cleric of Merkel has to offer you. Maybe I am we, not going to be a cleric of Merkel. Oh my god. <laughs> she just keeps getting more battle. evil and more evil. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, Arena will be the big bad. Yeah. 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 Should be a yeah. titan-sized hobbit. Gonna, <laughs> gonna, yeah. Look at, look at ball and and yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Vitz goes eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Always on time. Fight With me, that fight me. Great eruption of energy. <laughs> you and ghost. Along with Derek and Dougley and Valev and Kai and Golshaw, all stand within the halls of the Academy of Knowing. Apollo, He's out again. Give You're dead. me a wisdom <laughs> save, please. <laughs> 
Guidance. Yeah. That is a 19. 19. Ooh. Okay. As yeah. Lady Silverhand <laughs> counts at the five, of you, including ghosts, six, Dugley, seven. The swirling energy of the planes shifting around you, the many different visages erupting along different scales of time. You watch as tr- a version of Terrell, the great planet that Faerun is on, spins off and just erupts into flame, destroying itself. Another one going in a different direction. Time of peace. Another one. Another one. As each different linear existence is coming slowly together. You're watching the spheres and the lines and the planar existences, the forms, some disappear, getting tighter and tighter. Lady Silverhand screams in pain. There's something wrong. I can't. I don't know. There's a shatter in the academy. And there you see Apollo standing, slightly slumped over, his spear in one hand. And as he brings up his face to stare at all of you, part of his face is now removed. And you just see this cackling skull, this great red eye and a green eye, his lower jaw distended. And there you are. I was wondering where you were hiding. The weave belongs to me. This universe is mine. Not yours or the others. <laughs> Such a strong form, this one. It's not like those other weak forms I've taken before. <laughs> the scribe in the basement. The creature I set loose upon the interior of that silly little tavern. That silly little waypoint in your town. <laughs> I showed Max where to unbury his burden. All of these revelations were mine to control. Do you really think that the vault in Candlekeep could be found? Do you really think, Bolshar, you were meant to find those ruined temples? <laughs> I set you all on your path to ultimately bring me here. And there she is, standing by the lathe, with the weave in her hand, doing all the work for me. (laughs) The visage fades, just an echo in the chamber. Did you really think you could beat a god? Did you really think there was any hope to beat me? Yes. Look at you weak fools. This thing that I inhabit is a puppet. It's soul already consumed by me. I will consume each one of you with equal intent. <laughs> All right, I'm cutting it short, and then I attack. <laughs> what are you attacking? There's nothing there. It, it oh, disappeared. It's, it's a visage? I thought it was the avatar. Well, it's Apollo's corpse form that he inhabited suddenly oh, yeah, the form just kind of dissipates. It's gone. Corpse. And now it's just an Again. echoing corpse. just mocking voice. Go and get out of your ghost. Wait, you failed your death saving? Oh, wait, never mind. You took a shit ton of damage, so of course you did. I actually have two. I have two failed saves and I have yet to make my other ones. Nope, not yet. He's still got one more roll left. Uh, so... As all of you watch, or more importantly, listen to this voice echoing throughout the chamber, you watch as Lady Silverhand is clearly struggling with the astral lathe. She is having a hard time concentrating, and every now and then, time stops. (laughs) And you're in a certain space, a certain location, a certain kind of reality around you, and then she pushes harder into the lathe and then hovering nearby is the mechanical owl kind of breathing energy into the lathe. You can see the two candle lamps in the back flaring from time to time. 
Lady Silverhand, how can we help? I don't know what it is. Talk to him. I don't think he's dead yet. I'm trying to find the one point in time I can bring him back, and I'm having trouble finding Apollo. him. He is here Apollo. somewhere. You can see her rest Apollo. control within the lathe. And the crystal begins to crack slightly as if it's unable to contain itself. I'm going to go walk over to Apollo's corpse body, wherever. He, is he standing? Is it on the ground? No, on the it's ground? nowhere. It was there, oh. and then it oh, it's just disappeared. Gone completely. It's just a booming voice inside the, cat, the academy at this point. Are we caught up in this vortex, or can we go walk around inside the building? The building itself is mostly like hard to see. But good point, Golshaw. Give me a perception check so you can see. So I'll let you know what you see. Perception. Plus. Uh, 22. 22. Every now and then, the academy stops, and there's a moment you can see what's going on outside. Sometimes it's chaos. Sometimes it's peaceful. Sometimes there's nothing going on. Other times, heaps of the undead wandering around the face of what you know to be your home. It's very strange. It's almost as if this space that Lady Silverhand's created is a temporary space trying to find something, but it's uncontrolled. The magic is weakening. She's weakening. The concentration is fading. You get the feeling that the avatar that is Merkel that has taken over Apollo has something to do with it, but you're just not sure what it is. You can walk around. I'm going to go down. I know where he fell, right? Sure. Uh, for I think I need to heal myself real quick, though. Do I have time to heal myself? Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, I wanted to heal everybody. Is everybody down still the same amount? Yeah. I don't I know if Douglas here. But... He's there. I'm assuming. Oh. <laughs> Do we all have one point. hit point? His, Do we um, all have one hit point? Come on, go down. Jason, hmm? do we all have one hit point? Um, no, only... Only um, oh, those that encountered the three shattered avatars, which I believe was Golshaw, Balev, and Apollo. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I need... I'm going to take some of my healing potions... So uh, before you do that, zero or I wanted to I wanted to heal. Yeah. Okay. I'll mass wait for you guys heal. Healing. Okay, go for it. Um, I was gonna do mass heal. Uh, it's seven hundred hit points divided by everybody. Ooh. Oh shit. Okay. So that'll affect. Oh, wow. Everybody but Apollo. But Apollo. But Apollo. He still is enshrined with the. Um, the vestige of the avatar. Gilshaw, do you not know how to type in numbers? Are you really spam clicking? Oh. No, it, it, it makes you do that. It makes you do that for your lay on hands. So sorry. Should we all? Does it really? That? Yeah. So let me oh, just. Oh, that's mute. stupid. Well, just go up and highlight the number and hit zero, or hit zero, and then add the amount that you took off. <laughs> Yo's young bucks and their fanciful ideas. <laughs> How many hit points? So it's seven hundred divided between one. Five, Everybody that needs them. Four, oh, All right. I definitely do. I don't know how many hit points I have because I was unconscious before. So does that mean I have zero hit points? You have one. Okay. How much? Brought have... back to consciousness. So you have one. All right. I. So that's 140 each, it sounds like. Sounds about right. All right. Uh, 140 each? Yeah, because 5 times yeah. 140 is 700. Okay. Uh... Unless it brings you up to a max that you can't reach 140. But I think you guys are all yeah, I don't high enough level. Yep, that brings me close to my max, but not okay. completely. I'm 11 points away, so yay, thank you. What do you have uh, for Arena? 
Dudley didn't use I 28 that. of his points, so you can get, or didn't use 12 of his points, so you can get the 12 out of him. You can, you can take 12 extra. Who? Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, you might want to give it to somebody who needs it more. Um, poor buddy. So I'm going to try to go down there where, to where I saw yeah. all Yeah, Shaw, if you can't add to yourself. So oh, Arena... He needs 74 hit points. So Arena th thrusts up her hand to. and beacons out the healing essence of her power, slamming into everybody with equal fervor and strength. Golshaw, you begin to stroll down off the platform where the lathe and where the others are either helping each other supporting Lady Silverhand, and this vortex around you is spinning ever faster, almost like the chaos is causing it to become even more uncontrolled. And as you step down, hundreds of the forms that are Apollo pop into existence. Uh, I grab one that looks good. <laughs> yeah, you reach out and grab one, and it just like disappears in your hand. Ah, so if you need any more, add the 42 for you, girl shot, because I know you got a big health pool. Okay, thanks. I'm not really sure why she thinks this world matters anymore. <laughs> it's mine now, not hers. She no, can't it's have not. it. You can't have it. You watch as four of the Apollo forms slam into you, just disintegrating on contact. As you take 28 points of necrotic damage. Swing wildly. A handful of them just disintegrate against your weapon. <laughs> you fool. She's abandoned you. Even now, you're about to die. And you think she matters. You think you matter to her. I wonder what sob story. <laughs> What's they surprising to me is that you think you matter. Oh, I matter. You watch as another dozen or so Apollo forms slam into you, giving you 31 points of necrotic damage. But more pop up in its place. Your fixation on trying to find this creature, trying to find where he is. Give me a charisma save, Gulshaw. Okay. Where's my character sheet? Chris and uh, 27. There's a moment for voices in your head. You are my champion. You are in between places of existence and time. You could feel the heat and cold of the hammer build in your hand. You could see the ball skull on one side flare into existence and the life tree flare into existence on the other side. And for the very first time, an arcane magic is swirling around this hammer in the form of black wings and a white mask as this hammer has been touched by her belief in you. So what are I you just... doing? All the visages look confused. No? I'm going to find the real Apollo now, and I just slam the hammer down on the ground. And as you bring the hammer down, you watch as all the visages erupt and disappear along with yourself. All of you watch as this plume of energy focuses outward. <laughs> it's just a moment of silence and you hear a sound off in the distance as the unconscious form of Apollo lands on the interior of the academy. Disfigured, dying, bleeding out, Apollo, give me your final death save, please. Oh, no, not again. Can I get to him before his final death save? 
You're gone. Oh, I'm gone. Can I get to him before his final death save? Well, it depends on what he got. What'd you get? A 10? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I got, oh my I got God. a potion. Um, Can any of us? <laughs> I'll say everybody who wants to try with a... Anybody who wants to try, give me a dex check. Give me a d20 and add your dex modifier. Nope, that's like a 10. No, 11. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Blue. I think I got a 24. What'd you Ooh. get, Blue? Same, 24. I rolled a 24. natural 19 plus 5. Okay. I, no. me, uh, me too. I got that 19 plus 5. I'll say Derek and Valev, as soon as you hear Apollo hit the ground, poof, we're familiar with that sound. Yeah, you immediately <laughs> sprint over yeah. and just dump one of those potions between the two of you into his mouth. Alright, 2d4. 2d4. Oh, I, I have the uh, superior one. If we can give more. Yeah, you guys can roll. Feel free. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's eight d four. Just give him like eight. I'm just so fast. Like, <laughs> just like eh. <laughs> you got seven from. You watch as Apollo's eyes begin to blank and flare open. Twenty <laughs> minor wounds begin to stitch themselves close, but some of the more egregious <sighs> wounds kind of have a sense of permanency about them. The form that he's in has taken so much damage from being contained from within by the Avatar Merkel. But looking around, he is alive. Barely. But no sign of Golsha anywhere. Just a sense of relief coming from the astral lathe as Lady Silverhand begins to scream out, yes, this is it. I, this has got to be the right one. There's an explosion of energy and a percussion of just this sense of thunder. As it echoes out. And with that, there's a moment of calm. She takes her hand away from the crystal that is now floating with the internal structure of the lathe. It's being circled by the great owl. The light, the beacons in the background lit up behind the lathe. All of you are here with the exception of Golsha. You make your way down towards Lady Silverhand, she looks at all of you. I have been working on this for a very long time. I wish I could have shown and shared more sooner. This was the best I could do. Hopefully, it's the world that we hoped. And all of you kind of helping each other up. You hear the as the academy doors kind of swing open. There's light coming through. It's blistering at first and then fades slightly. All of you kind of hear a voice echoing. Anybody in there? Hello? Hello? Who is it? Who is that? You. Hello. It's me. Hi. Brackus. Ah. And you watch as Brackus steps into the internal oh. area of the academy, looks around. By the gods, you, you're not dead. And as all of you stare at Brackus, he's got a very long beard, very gray in appearance, wearing ceremonial armor of sorts. And now you begin to hear the music flowing from outside, great trumpets and blaring horns. And his withered form stops in front of you. By God, it's been so long. 
but we don't know what you sacrificed. It saved us. Come, look at what happened. And you watch as he turns and he's limping slightly away. And he exits the academy. And there's a moment of pause and calm and then a great roaring sensation echoing up from outside somewhere. Cheers and sounds and music and celebration begin to echo to the interior of the I academy. guess I go and just peek through the door real quick. Did he do something different with his hair? <laughs> he looks... can't put my he finger on He looks older. It. He looks, is that it? Yeah. I swear to God, if there's hellscapes of fire outside... <laughs> one by one, I think one, they'd be uh, screaming and moaning, not cheering. One by one, you begin to move away yeah, exactly. from the lathe and towards the door. Lady Silverhand, in tow, kind of behind all of you, and all of you now stand in the great open double doors, and you're looking out on a landscape of peace, growth. The once minor city that was Wist is now a metropolis. This great iron and stone capital city with dozens of towers expanding out 10, 20, 30 miles in all directions around the academy. But the space that the academy in is exactly as you remember it, as this space has become a holy place, a place where the followers of Baal, the Raven Queen, and many others who recognize the sacrifice for what it was travel here. Brachus stands at the foot of the stairs. I don't no trust sign, it. No sign of Lord Silverhand anywhere. I don't but believe it. Nope. Mixed in the crowd, great throngs of Templars. Crowns guards, those in ceremonial uniforms. A very young crowned individual makes his way up the pathway. He's flanked by priests of the Raven Queen and the priests of Baal. In tow, ceremonial adornment of the tribe that you're familiar with, Velev as all of the 26 tribes of the Bearkin are here. You even look off in the distance to see the great ranks of Golshaw's brethren are here as well. The Plains Orcs here in celebration. All that fought, all that were involved so many years ago. You watch as this young crowned individual looks everything the mark of Lord Silverhand stands there on the stairs to look at all of you. When my great-great-grandfather told me of this day, I thought it would never happen. You have been lost to us for almost a hundred years. Oh my god. Shut That's up. good uh, to have you back. hundred years? No, see, we were just in a fight, and then I was on, like, some grassy meadow, and that wasn't real, and then I was in the temple, in the academy, and now here, there's some, There's a trick. This is a trick. I'm not going to fall for it. We're in the middle of a fight right now, and we oh. need to get back to it. Oh. <laughs> I want to watch this lady so the baby's got me beat. <laughs> You watch as Lady yeah. Silverhand kind of pushes through all of you. I was going to ask looks. Lady Silverhand if she jumped us forward in time. Derek, it was the best I could do. Without Golshaw's sacrifice, I would not have been able to find the conduit his, necessary to bring us to this point in time. His what now? Golshaw has moved on. He now is in the hands of the Raven Queen. His soul is with her. No. That was the best I could do. I am sorry. 
then send us back. I do we were not in yeah. the middle of a fight. We, we, were, we were winning. There were, the tides were turning. Like We had a Belev, shot. look around you. You won. This is that timeline we left. The best I could do was bring us back at this point of time. Could what I about been sacrificed instead? That's okay, mother. What about the avatars? There are still three of them. Yes, there was the one that attempted to influence Valev. There was the one that attempted to influence Kai. And then there was the one that possessed Apollo's near dead form. That was the final form that Golshaw defeated. That was his great sacrifice. Without we that. I would not have been able to find our way back. The weave is restored. This temple, this dedicated temple to her grace, known as Ion, the great new watcher of the weave, sent me on this errand with purpose. Over 250 years ago, now 350 years ago, I was the last survivor of the Rift Wars that could possibly make this happen. But without you and your friends for what you've done to bring this academy back into existence, the retrieval of the Weave Crystal, the subjugation and the ability to keep Merkel from establishing his form on the material plane, this is the world as it is. This is your world. You saved it. I wish I could have done better, but even my power knows its limits. Maybe you can. Just send us back to right at the moment. We could be there with him. We can all make it. Derek, I nearly destroyed us all in myself getting here. I do not have the ability to undo the crystal. The crystal is set in motion. The celestial gate, once again, is exposed to the world. If I take out that crystal, the weave collapses, and we may never come back ever again. But you said you said his soul is with the Raven Queen, right? I, be I believe it to be, yes. So we just go get it from her. I don't think it works that way, Valev. I well, we can figure it out. Apparently, we apparently we did some amazing shit. We don't remember any of it happening, but apparently, we can turn the tides of time and gods and all kinds of shit, so we could get Glashaw back. You're more than welcome to try, but it's going to be from here, dear. Brackus, how many yeah. years has it been? Maybe since we can call on him. Battle? How many years has it been what, boy? How many years has it been since we vanished? It's been 92 years exactly. <laughs> uh, it's the Raven Queen, correct? And... He just looks up at you, Apollo. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have dedicated temples to all of you. We never expected you to come back. My great-great-grandfather left a journal in regards to your presence. Brachus, the last great heir of the original survivors, only through magic. Were we able to maintain his lifeblood? Really? He promised he would never sleep until he saw this academy returned to its proper place. And here it is. You are back. Come and bask in the world that you and your friends have given us all. The hope and the standing of life. Great cities have been built since your leave. This world is your world. You saved it. But everyone we knew and loved is gone. I guess I'll just 
I'll sort of mm. lean back on the steps of the academy. If victory feels so I'll sour. I'll put my arm around my mother. Scorch, Max, Vanguard. You watch as... Well, he's a dragon. I'm pretty sure he's fine. You watch as the young king points off in the yeah. distance. And you can see a great figure carved in the distant mountainscape. A visage of Scorch and a massive stone titan frozen in the effects of struggle and time. They helped buy you the time you needed, as you all did with each other. Time was the most important thing. Arita, give me an insight check really quick. Okie dokie. Um, I'm rolling on D&D Beyond. Oh. I hate rolling on D&D Beyond. <laughs> No, I'm not rolling on D&D Beyond. It's <laughs> buried. I got a six on D&D Beyond. Yes. Six. This is why I don't like rolling on D&D Beyond. But my dice are buried. There is something about this that doesn't feel quite right to you. It feels like it makes sense. But you remember a distant conversation you had. And a promise that was made. Um, yes, I remember a conversation I had and a promise that was made. Maybe with, uh, I don't know, a god you're now serving. <laughs> yep, that's kind of what I was thinking. But I'm... <laughs> he is so fighting sleep. Arena, Arena goes to the future and meets her baby. <laughs> baby Arena. Uh, her future death baby cleric. <laughs> the next campaign. <laughs> death babies. Death babies. Attack. I do not know why he is fighting sleep so hard. Um, he wants to watch the game. No. See how it ends. It. Um... Okay, so not rolling on my yeah yeah yeah. So my dice got an eighteen. What the fuck? D and D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know that I know the show. Um. So I'm I'm gonna um I'm I'm thinking about talking to Ball in my brain. Okay. And Ball, are you there? Just a silence. Huh. Okay. Is there a temple to Ball around that I can see? Off in the distance, you can see one erected with the visage of Arena and Ghost at her side. <laughs> Weird. That's that's a really big me. Hmm. Um, it like encompasses an entire like religious district of the city, right. and alongside My or the, the just everything. So there's this huge, just monolithic site where the visage of Golsha, yourself, split between two temples. You can see other temples coming into existence. You can see this great religious center. That has been built around the idea of the sacrifice. Huh. I'm I'm gonna Yeah, close close my eyes, take a deep breath, and try and call out to ball again. There's a thrum noise. Do you I'm getting an echo on your microphone. Do you have Twitch on? My microphone? No, I'm getting an echo whenever you talk. Oh, I don't know why. Weird. Okay. Because it's, it's in now. my headphones. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Um, as you focus on that memory of that promise, mm -hmm. there's a moment of connection, 
a sense of balance, a sense of and a warm breeze kind of floats along in front of you. The smell of life fills your nostrils. A promise will be kept. What promise shall I offer you? What does my greatest priestess of all my followers ask of me? Out of character. Guys, what did we want? Got her short term <laughs> memory is oblivious <laughs> these days. I have been dealing with a screaming baby. It's baby. We want Gashaw. Oh, we it's want Gashaw. <laughs> mm, getting Gashaw back. Baby the brain thing. Thing. Mm. Okay. Uh, Gashaw didn't make it. I. Can you. I want. I want Gulshaw. And if I give this to you, as promised, well, the least I can do is give you the opportunity. And with that, things change and morph around you. You're no longer in front of the academy. You're in an open field, a glade of sorts. In heavy armor amongst dozens of his followers, you can see Golsha. <laughs> As he stands there, practicing, swinging his weapon, he turns around to see you. It's a very peaceful look on his face. And you begin to realize that most of the Templars that surround him are his brothers and sisters that fell in battle. Golsha, you watch as Arena is now in the glade of repose. The great space between two places of existence before that final decision can be made. Uh, Two of you take a moment to stare at each other. Realization setting in. Have you died? No, but you did. Well, yes, I I chose to. Well, I want to bring you back. And how will you do that? I, I, a God made me a promise and I'm collecting on that promise. Transfer that promise to me. Can I do that? Any wish you desire. <sighs> okay. You feel a disconnect, a conclusion of your thoughts. The balance is now permanent. Here you face life. Here you are death. And with that movement of belief and this realization of the true, pure sacrifice is what Golsha has achieved. You watch as all of his brothers and sisters nod, begin to turn and march through this great garden expanse, that point of crossing over. Hovering nearby, a feminine form dressed all in black feathers, a mask of content lingers in the background. The promise yeah. is now yours, Gulsha. What shall you do with it? Arena will go back to the, to the world and worship her old gods as a life cleric. And so I say, and so it is done. Good luck to you, Arena. With that, the Raven Queen gets up off of the small boulder that she leans on. 
walks over to you, Golsha, and gives you the kiss of the gods on your cheek. You are beyond worthy of all my champions. And she turns. Shall we go? I know of this strange place called Exandria. It should be fun. Show me. Until we meet again, Arena. All of you watch as Arena stands there, but different. The faded form of Ghost gone, back to his normal self. Arena's hair and visage back to her normal self. Once again, Arena, you can feel the call of the twins deep inside your psyche. That reestablishment, that reconnection. Thought and hope. Now I kind of want to. Oh, I got, I got, I got kissed by one of them. <laughs> I want Golsha. Oh. I don't think Golsha wants to come back. <sighs> okay. Golsha's not coming back, guys. You saw well, him? Did he? That's his choice to make, I suppose. <sighs> and Kai dabs her eyes with a hanky. <sighs> I am going to try and call out to the twins and see if I can use that kiss to bring Golsha back. There. There's a moment that you feel that connection, that promise restored. And you can hear their lilty voices speak in union. We knew you'd come back. Did we not? I missed you. Sometimes sacrifices have a purpose. Sometimes the pain of that sacrifice is important to all. I cannot bring him back. He is unwilling to return. I thought he would be. He seeks his path in other places. However, I can do you one better. Shall we go back to the beginning? Shall we try this again? Oh, it could turn out so much worse, though. Well, there are many different beginnings. All with different endings. The love that you and your friends have for each other and the hope and peace you've given this world is not to be slighted. I don't know if I want to do it over again. I think... I think it ended okay. Ah. Oh, that is the answer we, we would like. That is the answer that is the truth. Our friends are alive. The world is prosperous. Evil contained. To go back to the beginning. Throw his sacrifice away. You truly are... Our priestess of the twins. And we do what we can to foster you and the others. Guide you on your way. Keep this world safe. I'll make sure we build you guys a temple too. Thank you. And with that... Sounds of the world fade, the sounds of celebration, the idea the war is over, the struggle is over. So we'll bring Golshaw back here in a minute, mm -hmm. but we're going to start with Derek. <laughs> What's your epilogue? 
for your ranger? Where do you see your ranger going, doing with the rest of their life? Seeing as this world is 92 years into the future. <laughs> and it appears that civilization is stabilized and the world as they built all this, I think I'll go towards the coast. I've always wanted to see the ocean. And maybe from there, I'll find a ship and sail the world and explore, find new places, new adventures for myself. Maybe one day I'll return to Wiss, but for now, I think I'll just enjoy the travels and I'll say good, spend a few days, weeks maybe in Wiss, getting to see everything and then making preparations and head out. Kai. Yeah. How do you see? Kai Silverhand's future in this new world. She will probably stay at her mother's side. Um, she'll go check out her gear works, probably kind of take over running it and coming up with new inventions and things to better the whole town uh, city now. <laughs> um, and yeah, she'll just kind of continue living there and and helping out wherever she can. Apollo. This new lease on life you have for the fifth time. <laughs> what do you see Apollo doing with the rest <laughs> of her life? You're muted. Apollo is actually going to look for a way to start Put the mic closer to you because you keep cutting in and out. There you he go. wants Gushaw back. So, and he wants, instead of just, it's called Gushaw sacrificing himself, he more wants himself as a sacrifice than Gushaw. So he's find, trying to find a way to return back to that timeline trying to find any way for uh, him to take Goshaw's place. As he's probably still half face gone, right? He's he's definitely suffered some permanent disfigurement from the encounter. It was rough. I don't, I he don't, probably I don't definitely know. still didn't talk with uh, a lot of people. I, I would I would have Apollo, he doesn't want to come back. Apollo is probably more stubborn, just... Valev. Um, you have to take his place. Valev, how do you see you spending the rest of your life amongst the world? Um, well, the realization that the only people we actually know that are still alive are each other and Lady Silverhand and Brackish but who knows for how much longer he'll be around um Valev will want to um find out who's the new leader of the Barricade are um and he's assuming Vengar's past so he wants to try and find a, some uh, like tutorship, be uh, find a find a mentor, learn about the new time, what what is possible, what's capable in just like technology and magic and what they've learned since the weave has been restored. Um, wants to study that. He'll definitely walk out to the uh, to the edge of the forest, wherever that expanse may be, as this entire metropolis is now much larger than. Uh, he knew and um, call out for Wilson and <laughs> hope that he can find, find a friend that can fill him in and, and exchange stories with. Um, and then kind of moving forward, 
trying to keep in touch. Um, still thinking he has the capability to send people messages. He just thinks really hard all the time and tries to send messages to like Arena <laughs> and Kai, but he never gets a response. So he just figures that they're really busy and that they'll get back to him at any given time. Um, and uh, it, as far as continuing to travel out and branch out after a little bit of time staying uh, in WIST and assuming that our keep is still kind of available to us, mm -hmm. um, uh striking out into the world uh Valev's new mission is to um find and preserve or uh help establish uh the repopulation of dragons just gonna go searching for eggs and see if he can find any arena yep what do you do for the rest of your time on this planet I am going to spend it, um, you know, with the, um, oh my gosh, words, the twins. I'm going to build their temple, get their temple built, and I'm going to, you know, work on spreading the life cleric, life cleric, be their master life cleric. And in Wist. It's 20 years since the return. It's the 20th year of what they call the return of the heroes of the gift and the establishment of the weave. All of you, with the exception of Arena and Kai, who lingered in the now capital city known as Wist, the great expanding Midlands Kingdom, the gradual recovery of a place called, well, depending on which book you read, Sword Coast, the Red Wizards of Thay assume their mantle of power again. The Choltean Desert remains a desert, but gradually the weather is changing, climate is changing yet again down there the great migratory tribes wander east west north south there's even a rumor of a great civilization that worship a Dijini in the far east and even a familiar name is whispered from time to time but arena and kai as you stand 20 years older in the fort, Fort Chimera, which has now been repurposed, reconstituted, rebuilt, this massive citadel that watches over this new formed country. There's a knock at the door. A bearkin goes by the name of Alev has arrived for the anniversary. Rumors of a wanderer committing great deeds of sacrifice and wonder has even shown up. The individual known as Apollo, rarely ever seen other than the wilds, or out wandering about trying to bring back his friend, Golsha. And even the great world traveler, Derek, has returned for this great event. It's for the first time in 20 years. All five of you sit around a table, share a meal, talk about the past, how you got here. It's and it always, here. it always culminates around the conversation with Golsha, his sacrifice, everything that was done to save this world from falling into chaos and destruction. Yet again, so many owe themselves to such unlikely heroes. The stories go on all night about all the amazing things that Golsha did. Golsha, as you hover in some unknown space, fighting off creatures that would terrorize anyone into submission, there's a party. Five close friends 
are talking about you. You can hear their voices. Big smile on your face as you wade into a combat with no hope, no survival. As your Templars Sounds flank like you to the right and the left. But there's hope. And when there's hope, there's opportunity. And when there's opportunity, there's life. And with that, we have finished our campaign. We are done. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the ending you guys were thinking of, was it? No. <laughs> 92 years for sure. There was, Wait, uh, we hit level 20, right? We hit level 20. Were, One yeah, of the was, was going 20, 20 years, yeah. But <laughs> there were three possible endings. This is one of three. Pretty fucking awesome. So don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to raid someone tonight. Yeah, because, I like it. You know, Yay, raid. Raiding is fun. Um, Wait, I want to know what the other two possible endings were. That's not how I work. I doubt he'll even tell me. I doubt oh. he'll even tell me. What a, well, we know one of them's a bad ending. There's no well, doubt right. about that. Obviously. Yeah, well, we one all of them, die. One of the them contributing is a pretty rough. That, yeah, that, one of them is a pretty rough ending. That is what, true. What was the catalyst then? If you won't tell us the alternate ending, what was the catalyst that triggered this ending? Uh, the fact that you shattered the avatar in five rounds. Ah. That was the main trigger for that. Dope. So, yes. Oh, my God. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back in about a month with a whole new campaign, a little peek into that future. It's going to be in Exandria. It's going to be in a little place called Vasselheim, and it's going to take place in the continent of Isla. Um, and I've been writing and writing. I've got more writing to do. I will be doing some creative session, but we will be live in the studio I have to play with all my toys. Ivar will be back. <laughs> Callista will be back. You'll get to meet <laughs> Haley and Patrick from our Sunday night show. Um, and then we'll be adding a fifth person to our in-studio game. We're super stoked and excited. Thank you all for coming out. Hang out. We're going to raid some fellow creators and have some fun with it. Thank you, everybody. Favoring Reborn saying good night. We love you. And we'll good see night. you in a while. We love you. See you in a while. Play a game. See Play a game. Thanks, everyone. Love you all. Play a game. Play a game. Play a game. Play a game. <laughs> yeah, we did it. Game. Last one. <laughs> Finally. Finally. The last one. That's, we got that's our shit the together. ending that I wanted yeah. right there. That's the ending that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> You guys oh, teared oh, me up, man. wanting me to come back. Don't shy, game, you made me guys. cry. <laughs> oh, we tried no. like three separate times, but you kept saying no. No. Like whatever. All right, fine. Oh. <laughs> fine. Apollo goes it. crazy because of you. We'll, we'll have a life, right? Now I would have visited you in a dream, saying that I sacrificed myself for you, so you could go on. And Shut up! You would have visited Valev and said. Take a oh no, shower. I would constantly be watching Valev because you get into the most trouble of anybody. <laughs> so I'd always have like, I'd be fighting demons and looking back and going, what's Valev doing now? He's fucking, around with, fucking <laughs> around with dragon eggs. By the way, something I should know. Derek's married now. He has oh, two yeah. kids. Congratulations. And are, they, are they half scar. made of wood? <laughs> a big old scar where a kraken took a bite out of him when he went exploring in the ocean. Did you get did you get splinters making those babies? Oh yeah. Do we know who the lucky wooden lady was? <laughs> it was like look at tree. <laughs> she got no. leaves for hair <laughs> and bark for skin. <laughs> uh, That's near yes, the ocean. Yes, that was my one my one thing I wanted to do.